Hey everybody, it's Chris, and we're back with another Amiga thing. And this time, I have a package who was so gracious and kind and sent me something very special. I have already peeked. I couldn't wait. We were chatting on Facebook Messenger about it. And he said he would send this to me in hopes that it works. And there's something else in here too. So what Steve sent me was... A video toaster and oh, this out of the way. This uh, looks like a time-based corrector, and let me put my other glasses on because I can't see anything. It has S video, four BNC, and a up-down little switch. It's a little dusty. Uh, we'll stick it in and see if it works and so I have to move the uh, GVP 2824 this is just a spectrum um, down a slot but I'm gonna show you what this is doing first real quick here on the rebranded HP slash now a Commodore VGA monitor and I will have the other side on the Dell what I had going on was this I in a previous video, I don't know if I recorded it or not, had this. This was the 32 gig, uh, 2.5 inch IDE. I have a little converter that gives you the uh, 44 pin standard IDE. And I did have it in here and it was working fine. Uh, I put the GVP Spectrum on with Picasso 96. It was working fine. And I did something and chose another screen mode and it all of a sudden uh, decided that it was not going to work. So as you can see over here, it is on the 15 kilohertz side. Let me get this off of here. I'll just put it on my lap. And I'm going to go screen mode, and we're going to go into a GVP resolution on the Spectrum. We'll do 800 by 600, 16-bit uh, PC. I have to quit Amadoc and save. It'll show up over here now, crystal clear. And it's a very, very crisp display whoops I had my uh, oh I also put a GoTech in with the screen I posted some photos on it I have had some problems getting the face plate to fit around the lower side so I just kind of ground out underneath of the bottom and trimmed a little bit off the bottom with a, a flat file and got it to fit all right so this is the Amiga workbench in 16.5 uh, million color Right now it is set to 64K or 65, 535, or 65, 536 colors. And it is 60 hertz running at 37.5 kilohertz. And you will notice one thing here at the top. I have all of my chip RAM left because I had, uh, I lost about a mega chip RAM doing uh, multi-scan on 31 kilohertz to this monitor, which will still work, and uh, that'll be off the Amiga native adapter that has that thing, the 23 to VGA. This GVP card, before we get to the video toaster and stuff, has a neat uh, pass-through thing where there's a DB9 in the back that if you have a 15 kilohertz mode, this DB9 would then go out to a multi-scan monitor which this VGA is not and show you both resolutions haven't quite figured out a way to get that working uh, I did want to show you something real quick I'm going to go into workbench pattern now I do have MUI workbench pattern that uses MUI to give you a workbench pattern that cycles if you have a lot of great photos picture we're gonna set the picture I put mine in patterns and we're going to do the clouds and we're going to say test and save quit and quit it's taking a second to load because it is a JPEG but it's a high color image and there you go so that's workbench 65,535 colors um, when I scaled this photo it had a little bit of gray in the bottom. I just don't usually bother with that because Amadoc will cover that up. The GoTex in, she works and 
strangely enough, with a FB357 high density drive that the 4000s have, if I do not have a disc in DF1, which is my GoTech, because of the high density, it doesn't even show up. That's something new to me. Uh, with the other drives, with the 880K, it'll show up fine. DF1 always available. If I have a disc in here, it'll always show up as DF1. If I do not, it's just not there. Now, pluses and minuses of this video card. Pluses, it looks great. Minuses, anything 15 kilohertz without Mode Pro will not display. If I run a Benchmark or Witch Amiga or something, it'll just freak out. So, Hippo Player loads fine, everything works fine. But watch, I want to run Witch Amiga. If it doesn't work, it should show up on the Dell because that's my 15 kilohertz mode right now. Let's run Witch Amiga, which always just locks up the Amiga now. And you see it tries to go over there, but that's it. Nothing. Nothing at all. Just totally locks up. Hard drive just sits there. Nothing. This is not a Toaster 4000. This is a 2000. This is a double stack board. It's just a little too long. I physically cannot get this in here. Look. Oops. So, as you can see, space is a premium. With the BNC connectors, can't get it in. Can't get it in. It's too long. It's too long. I just I physically cannot get the card in. But I could take off this thing and see if I can get it in. This has the slot cut. See how this is? So I can put this in and it will slide in. That's what the toaster needs. Let's turn it on. We have a green light. I still need monitor, but I have the DPS software because this has all the PAR DPS. We're going to run the test. That's the time base corrector for DBC. Two point two. What is this card? Might help if I knew what the card was. Well, let's find that out. All right. So it's a PA, It's a time base corrector three. I don't have anything hooked up. I'm gonna have to. Get back to the drawing board on that. This is the original hard drive that the 4000 came with. This is a TBC3. Ooh, that's warm. That's why they came out with the Toaster 4000. Because it didn't fit. I physically, without cutting this case, cannot get this into the video slot. It's just not possible. And if you do manage to get the card to go in, it's never gonna, it's too long. The BNC's hit the back. I'll never get it to go at the bottom. Not because of the SIM problem. There we go. Because I have to literally bend the entire case. There we go, just to get it in. And then I'm still one short here where the BNC won't go. And it's just not worth destroying uh, this case for that. So we're gonna put it in the Amiga 2000 which is what this one was designed for anyway. The Toaster 4000 was made with a shorter run. Uh, you know, the BNCs were movable. So you could get it in there. So we are sitting at the 3.14 ROM. I am going to put the IDE hard drive back in. I'm NTSC, so the 28.63636 crystal that I had to keep giving the old Tanya Harding to has been replaced. Uh, John Hertel told me that you don't need the 50 to run because the 3640 has its own 50 that runs, and you don't even need that crystal, so that doesn't need to be there, and it works fine without it. I tested it, it's fine. It was the 28.63636 crystal that I had to keep messing with. And I guess when I banged on the 50, it tickled the NTSC one, and that's what made it come alive. So, And if you're interested at all in learning the video toaster, go check out Doug's channel on Tenmark. He did a whole series on the video toaster, and 
he has a hell of a lot more cables than I do and does a good job showing you what it is and how it works and how you can use it too. This is a Zorro 2 card. It does not require the uh, video slot up here so I can use any one of the slots even though it's the lowest slot. I could use the lowest slot because my memory chips, this is a thin card. It doesn't hit this last 90 slot. So we're going to do that because why not? That way I can have the other slots free for whatever. I don't know. It bumps into that slot. So anyway, we're just going to put that back in there and this will go in the lowest slot. Like, get in there. So. Crunchy. All right. So you can see my 90 still fits. It's stiff. Ah. U891 was uh, the in a butthole. So I uh, gave it a little <laughs> reflow. And everything's fine. It looks a little weird. Look at my memory. Okay, 1.052 graphics RAM, 12 mega chip. Or, fast. Sorry about the soldering iron cable. So now I'm going to go into spectrum mode. I'm going to go 800 by 600, 16 bit save. It's going to come, I'm going to hit OK. Whoops, back out here. I'm going to hit OK here. Save. It'll shoot over here. Alright, so now you'll notice it's a smaller display. I have 1.9 mega chip and 10 mega fast. Now if I reboot this You'll see in a second. There's the 15 kilohertz side. I have to get this sorted. I don't know where my cable is. I thought I had one. It wasn't a straight through. It was like a modem cable or something like that, old serial cable. But it's literally about this long. I don't know what happened to it. This is getting picky. I think she's tired and she's tired of having her clothes off so we're gonna up, get her dressed put the monitor back on top and then we'll play around some more so that's all i got for now thanks again steve for the toaster card for the 2000 and the tbc3 i greatly appreciate it and if you have any amiga stuff that you would like to donate to me hey i'll take it and i'm sure many others will too but once again, thank you guys very much for your support and watching my videos. I know a lot of them are stupid, but they're not to me, and I try to just help people out with problems that I have, and maybe I can help you out with something that you might be going through. I have every Amiga model there is, except one of the next gen, or two of the next gens, and uh, yeah, so stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.